Welcome back to Writing Done Right, everybody. We are gonna have another look at PHP list today, and we are gonna talk about email templates. So thanks for making it back to the program. I am Tom Morosky. I'm an author and a technology consultant. And today we are doing another video on our series of videos looking at PHP list. If you are new to this series of videos, PHP list is a self-hosted open source application where you can collect newsletter emails and you can send out newsletters. It will keep track of campaigns. You can do anything with the old school MailChimp. You can still do maybe the news new school MailChimp, you can do stuff as well. I'm just not as involved in that application since PHP list does everything I need it to do. And uh, we've done a video on how to install and configure PHP list. We've done another video about how to, uh, how to um, build your email landing page. So you can have a look at the playlist for that. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at how to actually create the newsletter templates. So we'll head on over to the computer for the rest of the video. All right, so here we are over on the computer and uh, we've logged into the back end here. This is a just a, a new test build that I have working right now. And uh, you'll notice the yellow bar up here that this is in test mode, no emails will be sent. You'll remember when we went through the configuration settings, this is in the uh, in the config.php file, you set a zero. I think it's a zero for testing and a one for live. So we've just set the zero. That way I don't accidentally send any emails from this platform because all we really want to do here today is show you how to use email templates. Now you can head on over to resources.phplist.com slash templates and they actually give you a series of templates here. And you can kind of see what these look like. There's also a responsive email template that I found over here on, uh, this is on freesoft.dev who has a GitHub page and he actually has all the text for it over here. So we'll go ahead and show you how to add these templates in. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come on down to campaigns and then down at campaigns, you have manage campaign, campaign templates, excuse me. So down here, you can see that um, you can add a new template. You can add templates from default selection. So if you go with these, you can just go ahead. There's a system template. There's a simple responsive template. So really, you don't need to actually do any real coding. These are going to get you ver something very simple. So go back to templates. Let's see. So this has been templated with the uh, ID one. So go back to templates and look, now we have a simple template. Now you can view what any template's gonna look like with sample content by clicking onto this guy here. You can see that it's fairly boring. We just have uh, this guy up here should be the subject line. We have the content block, which is gonna consist of some text, a header, some text with an image floated in. We have a footer block down here. All right, so that's really what you see inside of these. And if you go ahead and uh, hit the edit button, you'll see what makes up a template. Basically, you have a what you see is what you get editor here, or you can click your source button and view the source code. Now, you are going to need to know how to do some HTML, and there's a little caveat. If you've never worked with HTML-based email templating, it is not the easiest thing to do in the world. Um, which a lot of it is just because web browsers have done a good job of having some consistent standards, but um, email clients, uh, no, all bets are off. So you are never going to get an email, even with something like MailChimp or Constant Contact, that's going to work perfectly in every single platform. You're going to have to deal with some issues and some errors. So the best thing is do the best job that you can possibly do and uh, you'll get a chance to um, to work with that. Now inside of this, you basically formulate a web page. You can see here there's a lot of styles in this. We have button styles. So basically if you wanna use a button, you can use one of some of these classes, things like that. We'll do a separate video about how to actually create an email with your template. Uh, but uh, when you get actually down out of the header into the body, you'll see a couple of areas that are kind of like WordPress short codes. They're put in with brackets. So you can see this one here is subject. This gives you the title of the 
of the the list there. We should probably also see one of those after uh, inside of the the main body of it. Usually that's what they do because it's going to give us the uh, it'll give us the uh, the subject the the basically the title of it in the top of the newsletter. We'll see if this one does. You can see logo. Logo here is defined inside of your, I think it's config settings. You can set the logo for your system. If it's not there, it will be blank, but uh, you can set the logo and that will show up at the top of your simple newsletter here. You can see we have content. So it looks like we're not actually putting the title up there. The content is basically the stuff that you put inside your send a campaign option. We'll cover that in a separate video. You can see we have the footer text. So this is any text that is defined in the footer. We have contact. So this is set in from your configuration settings and the forward URL. So the forward URL is important. If you just take the email and hit the forward button, it will not forward write. But if you use the forward URL, it's going to ping into your server and allow somebody to send your email to somebody else utilizing that system. And then they're going to get in a little top of the email explaining that, you know, you had a friend that thought that this was a, a, good, um, a good system. All right. Now, that is how you just go ahead and hit the, uh, hit the button to just add a new template there. So let's have a look at what the other one looks like. We did the simple responsive. Let's just go ahead and add the system template. So let's go back to templates. Here's the system template. See what this one's going to look like. I like this one a little bit better uh, in that we have uh, we have a, a header up here. We have the basic information. It looks to me a little bit nicer. It's just not necessarily going to be responsive. So that's what that one looks like. And let's just go ahead and have a look at the code of this one as well. Source code, you can see how simple this one is. So there's pretty much nothing in the head. You can see down here, these are defining the colors. So this is the background color, which is that light blue. You can see, I think this one might be the light blue. This one might be, um, that one actually looks like a white. Uh, this this one here, the th let's see, border bottom, background, DEF, that one's going to be your blue. Here's your subject line we mentioned. Here's your content. And here's your footer. And here's your signature. So your signature can be placed in here as well. All right, let's go back to the templates and we'll head on over to this page here. Now the basic template, this is basically the one of the ones we just looked at. It's, you can see a little bit different. This one has the footer, no signature. This one here is going to be fairly similar, but the other templates that we have are a little bit different. So what we're going to do basically, we're just going to copy these guys and uh, we'll just copy all the text there. And then you can come in here, add a new template. And this one, I think this is called Barons, I think. Is that right? Barris. There's no. I'm not going to get it exactly correct. Good enough. We'll do that. Now, you don't want to paste it here. If you do, it's going to give you all of that HTML code in weird numbers. So hit the source button, copy what's here, and just paste it in. Change the source off, and you can kind of see what this is going to look like. This is the subject line. It's going to be on the sidebar. We have your contents in the middle. You have a footer and you have a signature down there. So you can go down here. You can check all links have a full URL. So this is useful if you accidentally put in a link that's not a full URL that'll correct that. Check that all images have a full URL and check that all external images exist. This is a good button to, to check in case in my newsletters I have a, an external image that I put at the top for my banners. And when you see those, uh, if I were to have this guy checking, it's going to check to make sure that that image actually exists before I save the changes. So go ahead and hit the save changes, and then you can see what a sample newsletter is going to look like. That's how easy it is. Now, again, as I said, these are all very simple, uh, very simple email templates because doing anything more complicated is a little bit more difficult. Um, I am working on developing a multi-column template as well, which basically the template's all the same, but you put some things in the style sheet that allows you to define, uh, it allows you to define columns by using style tags, which will work in most places. Again, few places, old Outlook, not going to work, but very few people are using old Outlook. It should work on any modern mobile device, things like that. So that's how easy it is. Just go ahead and uh, 
we'll go ahead and copy this one in as well. This is Chalton. So let's go ahead and add this one. Again, hit the source button, replace what's there with our link there, and then you can see what that one looks like. This one's a little bit more orange. Of course, you can go in there and you can change the style sheets for the colors to make it look a little bit nicer. Now, the other item here is you can see this guy over here um, and this guy over here. So your system, these guys, when a subscriber signs up to your mailing list, PHP list will automatically send them an email asking them to confirm. So this button here will be the style that is used by that original system email. So any automated system emails, which template should it use? So you can define a separate one. So you could say, let's use the Barris one for our system emails, but maybe you want to use the Chalton for the default for campaigns. If you don't set a default for campaigns, it might go with whatever the first one is or the default system one. And then if you preview your campaigns before you actually define the template, then you're going to see it with that template rather than the one you intended. Again, we will cover all that when we talk about how to actually send a campaign from this. Now, of course, any email that you get, you can view the source code and you can add that text. So this one is an independent one. The other ones we looked at were directly from PHP list. And uh, what we're going to see here, though, is he's just kind of walking through what this is going to look like. We can see what a live preview of the email is. So basically, we have a logo. He has got an image here. Uh, probably a title. He's got a nice button down here. There's a forward. There's the unsubscribe at any moment item. All right. So what you're going to do is go back to his GitHub page. And on his GitHub page, he has a variety of things here. What you want to see is this email. So this is basically the information that we need. So let's. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and copy just the text inside of here. You can see that he's got a lot of stuff in his. So this one's going to take a little bit of time to learn how to use, but that's okay. This one should be a lot better than the simple responsive. So let's call this one, we'll call it the complex responsive. Don't let complex um, mess you up. Maybe we'll look into this in fine detail and see what we get. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. Save our changes and look at the preview for this. So here we go. It's very similar. Uh, we have uh, sample newsletter content. There's no image to find in this one because we didn't have it there, but you can kind of see what it's going to look like. All right. Not sure why we got our uh, page reloaded like that. <laughs> Maybe it's just because of how large the template was. I think it's uh, pushed our window size down pretty low. So you can set that as your campaign default, whatever else. So that's how easy it is to work within these guys. Of course, you can open these guys up and you can edit anything that you might want to edit. So if you're looking at your at your borders and stuff, if you want to go with like a bright red, just need to uh, just uh, go online, find the hexadecimal code for colors, and then you can go ahead and uh, do that. So this is the hexadecimal for bright red. We'll go ahead and save those changes. And which one was I working on? There you go. You can see we put the bright red at the top. And then we can go through all these and find all of your, your code layouts and make those simple changes. So that's how easy it is to add campaign templates and what these items do. Of course, you can delete the ones you don't want. Like, I don't want the simple responsive anymore. You can uh, change the name of it up there. Just go ahead and give it a new name. You can actually define a template file by uploading one. Um, we didn't cover that here, but that's going to basically, I believe you just upload a, a raw HTML file is what it's going to do. So that is how you work with that. So there is how to manage your campaigns. We'll do another one where we talk about sending campaigns or anything else like that in the near future. So there we have it. Uh, hopefully that this will help you to learn how to use your PHP list a little bit more. And as authors, we definitely always need to leverage our newsletter mailing lists. And uh, the reason I like PHP lists is it gives me a little bit more control over it without sharing those emails with any other big companies. 
And this is a nice self-hosted solution. That's kind of my personal preference, albeit it is it does take a little bit more of a learning curve. And as we'll see when we create the campaigns, you do need to do a little bit more coding to get things to work, you know, work nicely in there. But at the same time, I think that the uh, the final product is definitely worth it to have everything managed on your own end. So with that, uh, thanks for watching. And I hope that we have helped you to get your writing done right.